What do you think about when you think about Texas? Perhaps it's the beautiful streets of San Antonio, or the pristine Gulf Coast beaches, or the barbecue, or maybe a strapping young gal boy. Well, when I think Texas, I think about mountains. Now, I know some of you are thinking, you're telling me the J.P. Morgan Chase building and Joe Rogan aren't the highest things in the state? Yes, and today I will be talking about one of these things. Texas's crown jewel, the Chizos Mountains, aka the centerpiece of Big Ben National Park. Let's talk geology. Three things gave rise to the beautiful topography that you see behind me and all around the park. Mountain building, volcanism, and erosion. Our journey starts a half a billion years ago and the area known as Big Bend is currently at the bottom of a deep ancient ocean known as the Ryak. Then, around 360 million years ago, a geologic plate known as a tectonic plate containing the ancient continent of Laurentia partially began to subduct and collide with another ancient continent, Gondwana. This caused the Ryak Ocean to close and the Wachita orogeny took place. Deep oceanic limestones formed from dead ocean creatures, shells, and skeletons were now being folded and compressed, metamorphosizing into new rock. 200 million years passes, and not much is known about this time. It is thought that continuous erosion and little to no plate tectonics in the region led to a period of non-deposition and thus constant removal. This unaccounted for gap is called an unconformity, and they are present in geologic features worldwide. We are now at 160 million years ago, and current day Big Bend is still underwater, though now it is more of a shallow sea. Sandstone, shale, and more limestone is formed during this time. Another 90 million years passes, and the park is about to experience the biggest period of change in its entire existence. The Farallon Oceanic Plate subducts under North America at a weirdly shallow angle, which, much like wearing a tight pair of boxer briefs, causes compression and stretching of the North American plate. This event is called the Laramide Orogeny. The Rockies form, which extend down to the northern reaches of Big Bend National Park. The area is uplifted out of the ocean. A few million years passes, and the melted remnants of the subducted Farallon plate start migrating upwards, where they rip through fractures of the crust, causing volcanism in the region. This volcanism either erupted out onto the surface, or remained trapped underground, where it formed structures like laccoliths, sills, and dikes. Granitic and later on basaltic rocks are deposited in mass. Following shortly after this, fractures known as normal faults form as a result of the compressional and volcanic forces. So we're at the top of Emery Peak, the tallest peak in Big Bend National Park. Stunning view behind me here. So as you can see, the rocks here are kind of white, very interesting, kind of volcanic in nature. So because of the horse and graven topography that I've talked about in a lot of my videos, where two normal faults essentially sink the ground and raise other sections of the ground, some of the rocks are the same at the bottom as at the top. Volcanism continued in the park until around two million years ago, and during all this, and still to this day, erosion was occurring rapidly. This carved the Chizos Mountains down into their modern magnificent state. The mountains lie within the Chihuahuan Desert, the biggest desert in North America, characterized by its calcareous soils, which means soils formed from shells and bone remains, limestone deposits, varying topography, and its relatively low rainfall. The final piece of this Big Bend puzzle which gives it its namesake, is the Rio Grande. Over the span of two million years, yes, only two million years, beautiful canyons like this were formed as the Rio Grande forced and carved its way through in its attempt to make its way down to the Atlantic. Now that we've covered formation, let's discuss human history of the region. 
And no, I'm not going to include the first time a redneck named Jerry escaped his midlife crisis by joyriding his Ford F-150 in the park. I'm going to speak on the native and European history that got us to today. Native peoples began inhabiting the region around 10 to 8,000 years ago and largely lived a nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle. These first peoples of the region were known as the Chizos, which is how the Big Bend Mountains got their name, and were briefly documented by Spanish conquistadors and missionaries as they crossed through the region in the late 1500s. Following this, the Mescalero branch of the widespread Apache tribe said, hey, that's my land, and launched a hostile takeover of the region in the late 1600s and early 1700s, and in some cases, just assimilated Chizos into their tribe. Apache raids in the region forced the Spanish, who by this point had colonized significant parts of Mexico and the western U.S., to construct forts called presidios along the Rio Grande. But Spanish forces were stretched too thin to combat the raids. Then comes the Comanche tribe from the U.S. southern plains. The Apache and the Comanche were heated rivals, and they raided each other's territories frequently. Big Bend was no exception. The Apaches were forced out, and by the 1800s, the Comanche were using the area as a route by which to launch raids into Mexico following the Mexican-American War. It was known as the Comanche Trail. But eventually, every white American's favorite two words came into play. Manifest destiny. The belief that U.S. colonialism needs to spread from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Soon, miners and ranchers had essentially fully conquered the region by the late 1880s. Overmining, overgrazing, and overfarming began to take their toll on the beauty of Big Bend, and the Rio Grande began to suffer. So in 1944, Big Bend was made a national park to protect its beauty for generations to come, although the Rio was not spared. By the mid-1900s, the river was at 20% of its original flow, and now is only around 12% of its original flow. Farming and frequent droughts upriver have devastated its flow, and soon the river is predicted to no longer reach the Atlantic Ocean. But on a lighter note, it's time I discuss the myriad of beautiful sights and hikes this huge national park has to offer. My journey started in Boquillas Canyon, right next to the Mexican town of Boquillas del Carmen, which usually you can go right ahead and enter if you have a US passport, but today the entry was blocked and you weren't able to go. But that doesn't mean that I didn't get my fill of Mexican culture. There was a couple folks that came over from the Mexican side that were selling various amounts of goods. A lot of them were selling food, some of them were selling hiking sticks. It was a very interesting cultural experience, and the canyon itself was super stunning right there along the Rio Grande. Following this, I headed on up to the Chizos Mountains, where I checked out one of the most famous trails in the entire park, the Lost Mine Trail, which takes you through a really beautiful oak forest that winds its way on up to a really beautiful viewpoint of the Chizos Mountains itself. Really awesome hike. I really enjoyed it. Just make sure that you go on a weekday because this one seems like it might get very crowded. The hardest hike I did while I was there was the nine and a half mile round trip trek to the top of Emery Peak, which is the high point of the Chizos Mountains. Stunning views at the top, although I must say once you get to the saddle, the views tank significantly when you're working your way through the forest because it is significantly damaged from a recent fire. My last visit in the park took me to Santa Elena Canyon, one of the most popular sites to view in the entire park, and for good reason. It's an absolutely breathtaking canyon, and none of these photos are going to be able to do it justice. Thank you very much for watching this video on the Chizos Mountains and Big Bend National Park. Stay tuned for more videos, I got a lot planned and a lot coming. And also, thank you very much for a thousand subscribers! It's absolutely amazing that so many of you want to consume this content, and I'm going to keep making it. So here's a reminder to get out and hike, and thank you very, very much for watching.